Outdoors, getting into the liquid cooler game. You can now have a virtual Stream Deck and NVIDIA fixing their mistakes in drivers and in product. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, May 21st, 2025. And we're gonna start off today with a reminder that we do have giveaways going on over on our Twitch streams, twitch.tv forward slash UFD Tech, in case you wanna to enter to win a 5090 gaming PC and twitch.tv forward slash UFD music for a 9070 XT PC. But I can tell you that as soon as I can get my hands on some of these products, I'm gonna put them in a computer to give away. Noctua showing off a bunch of new things over at Computex. We haven't had the chance to visit the booth just yet, but we will have it in upcoming shorts, but I didn't wanna to wait to talk about some of these things, such as their new liquid coolers that they're gonna be bringing to market early next year, allegedly. Noctua has had a history of delaying things in order to get them perfect. They're quoting Q1 2026 right now, but the new AIOs are actually using Asetek pumps, the G8V2s, and Noctua did a lot of work to optimize them for not just performance, but also noise quality and making sure that it is not annoying. With three layer sound insulation, an integrated mass damper, and having three different operating modes of quiet, balanced, and manual. These things look about what you would expect a Noctua liquid cooler to look like. Very minimal, still got the brown and beige going on, but hopefully will be fairly effective at cooling all of your computer parts. Six year manufacturer's warranty is what they're quoting, but new liquid cooler is not the only thing that they had. They did talk a little bit more about their thermo siphon cooler, which is the one that doesn't use a pump, but rather uses uh, physics to move the water. Uh, it's still in the development phase, they're working on that, but they have new power supplies that they're looking to unveil, We're gonna be partnered with Seasonic moving forward, but it's not just the 1600 watt prime one that we actually included in a recent PC giveaway that we did. It was a lot of knock to a parts in there. It was the cooler, um, the CPU cooler, the NHD15G2, it had the 1600 watt power supply, had a whole bunch of fans, it was in the APNX V1, it was a nice looking system. Anyways, the new power supplies are gonna be 850, 1000, and 1200 watts, hopefully not nearly as expensive as the 1600 watt, but we'll have NFA12G2 fans going into them. Noctua also showing off that they have a prototype mouse in partnership with Pulsar, the Pulsar Feynman Noctua edition. It looks like an open form factor, lightweight mouse with the Noctua color scheme and if you look real close you can see a fan it's got a fan inside to keep your uh, gamer sweat all taken care of they also announced a new case partnership with antec having the noctua brown and beige color scheme going on the antec flux pro noctua edition looking to come out sometime later this year as well as the nhd 15 g2 coming in chromax black to make it so that you don't have to just stick with the typical noctua colorway in case you don't like it i do i happen to think it's a it's a distinguished aesthetic it is its own thing if you have the brown and beige you know what what it's about i kind of like what Noctua's got going on there. I have enjoyed what Noctua is showing off here at Computex, but I gotta tell you, being in Taiwan, I miss a little few things from back home, like today's video sponsor. Around these parts, if there's a knock on the door, there's a 50-50 shot of it either being a weird PC component or a food delivery. While I have no advice for the PC part half, if you're looking for some yummy food to wind up at your door, let me tell you about today's sponsor, DoorDash, and I do have advice about the PC half. I, I don't know why my manager decided to put that in the script. I can advise you on computers. That's kind of what we do here. DoorDash and on-demand delivery pretty much just go hand in hand, the same way that DashPass and DoorDash go hand in hand. At its core, DashPass is there to save you money by providing $0 delivery fees. Better yet, there is no limit to how many orders you'll receive with the $0 delivery. Say Friday nights or your order in nights. Trust me, I get it. You had a long week. With DashPass, you can get your cozy Friday night delivered straight to your doorstep, all with a $0 delivery. Along with DashPass, members also receive exclusive offers and discounts, so the savings keep stacking. Oh, and you'll even get lower service fees on eligible orders. Here at the office, we jump on the DashPass offers every chance we get because having our company lunches come straight to us and saving money in the process is just too good to beat. Add some convenience to your life and check out DoorDash via the link in the description below and use my code UFDTech50. Get more from delivery for less with DashPass, $0 delivery fee and reduce service fees on eligible DoorDash orders. Sign up for DashPass today and get your first 30 days free if you're a new member. Subject to change, terms apply. Thanks to DoorDash for sponsoring today's video. Well, with all DoorDash has to offer, I might be able to DoorDash me a graphics card. I think I can DoorDash Best Buy back home. But Sapphire showing off that they have new AMD GPUs coming out later today. So this is gonna be happening after we film Hot News. I'm currently filming it before the AMD keynote. There may be things that pop up that are uh, more pressing for Hot News that 
I'll discuss in tomorrow's episode because we have a schedule that we're trying to maintain, but at 12 o'clock today, Sapphire should put 9060 XT graphics cards on their wall, as you can see here, right next to the 9070 and 9070 XTs. That is happening an hour after the AMD keynote ends. Now, we kind of already know everything about the 9060 XT, both from just rumors happening behind the scenes, but also some uh, people accidentally publishing the official AMD spec list for these cards. 32 compute units, it's got 3.13 gigahertz boost clock, eight or 16 gigabytes of memory, 150 or 182 watts total board power on a PCI Express 5.0 full slot setup. So we don't know how this is gonna compare to something like the 5060 Ti, specifically in gaming just yet. Maybe that's something AMD will unveil at their keynote where they discuss this graphics card. Maybe they won't discuss it at all and Lisa Sue is gonna reserve the keynote for uh, just talking about AI stuff to keep their shareholders happy. But I know that Elgato is keeping me happy with showing off a few new updates with what they're trying to do, which is bring Stream Deck everywhere. This helpful bit of software is now going to have virtual setup, virtual Stream Deck being integrated into the application that will allow you to turn your own devices into a Stream Deck to either have Elgato's integration or just easily do macros on a whole bunch of different stuff. Personally, I think of the Move Master, which we recently did a short on, which you can check out right up there. This thing has so many different keys that you can press and it can be ergonomically adjusted to how you like it. And this could be a fire way to like have some of the buttons dedicated to Stream Deck operations and then some of the buttons dedicated to like your gaming setup. Up. It's pretty cool. I like what Elgato's got going on here, but they also showed off the Mark II Stream Deck with scissor keys, getting rid of the membrane jiggly wigglies that are in the current Mark II, and instead having something that has sharper actuation. It should be nicer feeling. I mean, scissor keys were in some of the previous MacBooks, and that was a whole recall that had to happen there. So we'll see how these hold up. Should feel better, but I'm not necessarily sure it's going to be worth a full upgrade to do that, unless Reese can get me a really good deal on one. Let's see what he has for the tech products to save money today. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It is is Wednesday, my dudes, and I'll jump straight into the deals for you, starting with the Controller Gear Xbox Pro Charging Stand, which you can grab for only $14.99, making it $25 off. But then next, we have a bit of a weird one with the Atari 7800 Plus console, which is a modern take on the 7800, giving you a wireless controller and HDMI output for only $77.69, making it $52.30 off. And then lastly, today, we have the Elgato Facecam Mark II 1080p webcam, which you can grab for $109.99, making it $30 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hard Cheers. Well, Reese, NVIDIA is trying to give people a good deal when it comes to their laptops, trying to make them not be as bad as they once were. Because one of the problems that has been unveiled with the RTX 50 series mobile graphics cards is that they actually weren't reaching the total power specs that NVIDIA has quoted them for. Certain laptops quoted for like 115, 95 watts. Some of them are even higher, like 175. But apparently there has been a bug in the driver that has made it so that they are not hitting their full power specs spec list and instead throttling before they even reach that. But now NVIDIA with their latest driver has allegedly fixed this. They didn't put it into the driver notes, but instead only posted about it on the GeForce forum, but talking about how the TGP limit has been fixed and should be full. Some people have already tested this and showing that yes, they are indeed hitting higher clock speeds and getting a few more FPS in their video games, which could hopefully be better for people who are picking up the RTX 50 series laptops. And a big bump and anybody who picked up an RTX 5080 and wanted a little bit more VRAM because more details are now coming out about fixing that mistake of a graphics card by introducing new VRAM implementations for it. So one of the best well-known leakers in the NVIDIA scene discussing the RTX 5080 Super that should be coming out, kind of indicating that Super might be the name that they're going to use, as well as indicating the amount of CUDA cores it's gonna have and the memory setup. It looks like it's gonna maintain the same amount of course, that the current 5080 has at 10,752, but get 50% more VRAM coming in at 24 gigs. So kind of matching what the RTX 4090 had. Also bringing it in line with something like the 7900 XTX, just kind of putting it in a better bracket in terms of better implementation of not being limited by the VRAM. Additionally, that's not the only change that's happening. They're gonna be 
bumping up the memory speed. Currently, the RTX 5080 is the fastest memory that you can get on a 50 series card at 30 gigabits per second, but this new 5080 Super should have 32 gigabits per second, giving it a total of over a terabyte per second of memory bandwidth, which should match the RTX 4090. So essentially, the 5080 Super is gonna match the 4090 in memory and memory speed, but also have slightly less power consumption coming in at 400 plus watts, but likely still be worse in gaming because of its 6,000 fewer CUDA cores than it has versus the 4090, because it doesn't seem like there's been many architectural improvements that have helped with the new Blackwell car. So the 5080 Super should help adjust a few things that are going on with the 5080, but not fix all of the grievances that people had. And if we look at what Nvidia is currently charging for a 24 gigabyte Pro Blackwell card, this is likely gonna fall somewhere in the same price point of $1,000 to $1,500 MSRP with big old air quotes, especially if you go look at trying to buy a 5080 right now, they are in stock. You can get 5080s, you just cannot get them at 999. You can get them at 1389, 1409, 1420, uh, open box at 1420. It looks like they're roughly between 1400 and $1,600. You're getting them in stock new and sold by the primary companies. They are a bit more expensive than Nvidia led on. Maybe the 5080 Super follows the same price pattern as what we got with the 4080 Super, and there won't be a price increase, hopefully. We'll see how that all plays out moving forward. While I move backwards to see what you said in yesterday's episode of Hot News in the comments, we got Alexandra saying, obsessed with the puppy painting on your hotel room wall. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I like it. That's, this is dope. And then Pink Chicken saying, gamers, NVIDIA is corrupt and must be stopped. Also gamers, 509. That was the point where I was gushing over the Noctua 5080 saying that I can't wait to put it into a system. I will say, um, you know, I am not one for just completely uh, burning down companies and saying that they must be stopped. I think there are reasons to buy various different graphics cards, even at the price points that they're currently at. Is it purely for gaming? No. Is it purely for upgrading from recent graphics cards? No. But there, there is reasons to do it. And for me, the reason to get a 5080 Noctua is, number one, it looks really pretty. But then number two, we give them away. We give people the ability to access hardware that they otherwise couldn't by utilizing this platform, this channel that we have to get the hardware and then give it to one of you guys and that way we make it so that I mean a free 5080 is a pretty dang good deal for a lot of people that's a lot of gaming graphical horsepower that you're going to be able to play a lot of different things on and you know I'm not necessarily going to apologize for uh wanting wanting to build a system that I'm going to give to one of you and then Fanger Zero saying I have blind hate towards Mac OS because I absolutely hate having to use their OS every day for work FYI I tried to give it a fair chance over five years ago when I was originally forced to use it I've tried it but I still hate it I think I'd rather be stuck with a terminal at times. I get it. I understand that people uh, dislike certain operating systems. I mean, Microsoft doesn't have the greatest reputation with Windows. I, people don't like Mac OS for various different reasons. There's plenty of reasons to not like Linux, as uh, shocking as that might be to some of you to hear. Everybody has their own preferences and their own workflows that they're trying to accomplish. And all I know is that a MacBook Pro, uh, I have been using this nonstop for hours upon hours upon hours, and I don't have to plug it in. I don't have to plug it in to get full render speed on things like our editing software. It just does everything that I need to do because of Apple's vertical integration with the ARM processor. The efficiency just outshines every Windows laptop that I could possibly have while delivering exceptional power. That's the big thing. I can get great battery life on a Windows laptop, but it's gonna be with a significantly underpowered chip. I've got an M4 Max in here and I can render out videos, 4K videos like nobody's business while not having to be on the wall. Whereas Windows, if you unplug it, you lose a lot of performance because of just Windows issues. If Microsoft can fix that, I'd be open to switching back to Windows for various different things. But also I'm not gonna switch to Linux because of different compatibility things that I just don't wanna deal with while I'm on the go. I wanna make sure that it works the way that I want it to when I need it to, and that's that's what I like. And there's Funk liking my shirt from yesterday saying, where'd you get that TM and T-shirt? Um, I don't know. My wife got it for me as a Christmas gift and I love it. It feels so good. 
I think it looks pretty good on me. Um, I like the material. I like the look. It's not like audaciously Ninja Turtles, right? Like they're they're uh, kind of smaller, ill-defined pieces of the entire ensemble. And I like it a lot. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. And then Z Shrink saying, but how can you be a tech personality if you don't have blind hate for random things that about half of the people are okay with? I don't know. I don't know how I lucked into this job. I gotta be honest. I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be uh, able to go to Taiwan every year for Computex. I, um, I'm very appreciative for the, the position that we're in, the ability to uh, look at the Noctua 5080 launching and be like, I can ask Noctua and they, they may send me one so that I can give to one of you guys. I, uh, I appreciate the privilege of where I'm at and uh, I don't know, I'm thankful to be here. So uh, no blind hate here, just uh, some good old fashioned ribbing at some negative things that companies do and uh, an understanding that everybody's worldview and use case and life is different than my own. And sometimes that necessitates, you're gonna buy a 5060 even if the 90,000% of the internet hates you for it because it works for you and that's okay. You might not think it is because it's not okay for you, but for somebody it is and so they're gonna do it. And I'm gonna end this episode of Hot News right here because uh, I already can anticipate the hate comments coming in, so. Thank you.